Well, welcome to worship from the Bucknell team for this very special Christ the King Sunday or stir up Sunday traditionally when people would stir up the mixture, add a bit more port or sherry into the into the Christmas cake, into the Christmas pudding. Um, and maybe thinking about stir, if he does stir up Sunday, um, God stir us up today. Lord, stir something afresh in our hearts, we pray. I call it prayer for today says this. God the Father, help us to hear the call of Christ the King and to follow in his service, whose kingdom has no end. For he reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, one glory, now and forever. All creation gives you praise. You alone are truly great. So come on, let's worship Christ the King.
let's just pause for a minute to pray. Father God, as we as we look to you today and as we celebrate Christ the King and Jesus' authority over our lives and over our world, Lord, we especially come to you today. Lord, we pray that you would stir up something fresh in our hearts today, that we would recognise your authority over our lives, your kingship. Lord, that you would challenge our hearts in your service to follow your ways and to live by your statutes and your rule. So Christ the King, we come to you afresh today. And our psalm for today, Psalm 93 says this, the Lord is King, he is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed in majesty and armed with strength. The world is set and it cannot be moved. Lord, your kingdom was set up long ago. You are everlasting. Lord, the seas rise up. The seas raise their voice. The seas lift up their pounding waves. The sound of the water is loud. The ocean's waves are powerful, but the Lord above is much greater. Lord, you, O laws, will stand forever. Your temple will be holy forevermore. We're going to listen to our reading for today and then I'm going to hand over to the lovely Reverend Julie Marshall who is going to inspire us from God's word. The Gospel reading is from Luke 23 verses 33 to 43. When they came to the place that is called the school, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. The people stood by watching, but the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, truly, I tell you today, you will be with me in paradise. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So Father God, we pray that now as we listen to what Rev Julie has prepared for us today, Lord, we trust in that you've inspired a heart and you've inspired a thinking. And now we pray, give us open ears and soft hearts. God, that we might hear something from you today. Amen. Thank you very much, Reverend Julie. Today is Christ the King Sunday. It's the last of our lectionary year, as next Sunday is the first in Advent. We approach with anticipation the waiting season, the watching season. On the last Sunday of the year, Christ the King Sunday, we look back on a year in reflection. We see that Christ has indeed died for our sins and he did die for our sins on the cross and yet he is alive and reigns now and forever. This is the message of the gospel. However, we are here to worship the king and to remind ourselves of his kingship as Luke's gospel tells us. Luke's gospel is a strange one to end the year as far as the lectionary is concerned. The trip to Golgotha, the place of the skull, where Jesus is to be crucified. It is indeed strange that we should encounter Christ's death just before we begin our watching and waiting in Advent. Of course, this passage refers to the kingship of Christ from the mocking of save yourself to truly he was the son of God, all of which surround the good news. Here 
we hear of Christ's plight, being strung up between two wrongdoers, one who repents and one who is facing death and continues to sin. Two men, both, one mocking, the other begging. Indeed, it is the story of the whole of Jesus' life being played out. Some believed, some denied, some repented, and some continued to sin. And if we think of all the well-read parables that we have thumbed through in the Bible, we come to the conclusion that surely that Jesus always had those who had to, com to be convinced and those who, despite everything that he did, would never believe. They would never come to him or to his father. And I guess that's like us in the church. We have some who believe fervently and others who doubt. Put yourself in the picture of the gospel. And which side would you have been on? Would you have been on the side with the sinner and constantly mock Jesus, doubting him, testing him, giving up hope? Or would you have been with the other man who sought redemption, who looked for forgiveness? And in many ways, then and now, there are those who denied Christ's kingship and there are those who failed to comprehend what his kingship was. Some looked for signs such as wealth and riches. This Jesus, our Jesus, was the son of a carpenter. How could he be a king? They looked on the earthly chapter of his life. They looked for the material possessions, the trimmings that convinced them that he was king. Just as a pharaoh had power over people, wealth and prestige, our Lord had none of this. And people, people failed to realise that he was king and that this Jesus of ours had the whole world in his hands. He was king of all creation, king of all kings. And some came to realise this all too late and too few understood. A rich businessman had everything in the world that he could hope for. A beautiful wife, money no object, business booming, fast cars and a family. So what more could he want? He was lord and master over his empire. And there is the poor man, working all hours of the day and night, scrimping together just to provide a meal for his family and a roof over their heads. His kingdom was rented accommodation. His power was limited to his household. In wealth, in power and in position, he was extremely poor and not worthy of an invitation to the table, some would say. The question is, who was the richest man? Who was the happiest? On paper, of course, the rich man, it would have been the rich man. But he was also poor. He was poor in spirit, for he had everything, but he also had nothing. For his marriage was a sham, both he and his wife with serial adulterers, his family dysfunctional, for all they knew was wealth the accumulation of wealth and how to abuse themselves with drugs, drink, sex and whatever other pleasures they could pursue. Short, sharp fixes, but no solution. The poor man, on the other hand, was extremely poor. He struggled, but 
his gains were appreciated by all his family. A faithful wife, a solid marriage a w- and wonderful children who cared not if they had treasures of the world, the latest gadget, the design fashions or powerful friends. This family had love. They had ambition. They had the means to improve themselves and they had real friends because no one could abuse their friendship for they had nothing to gain. Therefore, the richest man was the poorest and the poorest was the richest. And I know it sounds like an old cliche, but it's the truth. And in many ways, this passage from the gospel has to be understood in the context of its day. And we can apply the gospel to our own situations, our own realities. In essence, the kingship of Christ is also the kingdom of Christ. His kingdom has no boundaries, no borders. His kingdom is far reaching from the highest mountain to the deepest ocean. His kingdom is unlike any kingdom you or I will ever know. As we think of the kingdom size of countries and continents, we think of material where his spiritual and where his is spiritual and he is inviting us today to leave the material behind and join his spiritual kingdom and become a subject, a royal subject at that. And that's the way to understand the kingship of Christ. Today is the last Sunday. It is Christ the King. But it is a timely reminder for us of the man who died on the cross, who died for our sins, who died because he loved us, is soon to re-enter our world soon to be born in a manger and we prepare for it by understanding the resurrection and dissension of Christ, by acknowledging that his kingdom alone never ends, never concludes in our life, that he was crowned, is crowned and will be crowned again, the king of all kings, one world, without end. Today we come to worship him. Today we come hopefully understanding that it is he, the servant king, that we proclaim as majesty, kingdom authority, and that through him and with him his power overflows and we are his humble subjects. Christ is King. God save us. Amen. Thanks, thanks, Rev Julie. And we just take a few many, a few moments to just pause and to just think on God's word to us today. from Lightbeams Children's Club are going to lead us in our Lord's Prayer for today.
My God's the king on me Have you heard the story about my friend King Dave? Wouldn't let the giant stand in his way He said, hand me my sling cause he's not that tall My God is bigger and I watch him fall My God's the king of the giants My God's the king of the lions My God's the king of the creatures of the deep My God's the king of me Have you heard the one about this guy called Dan? Yes, he was a mighty holy praying man They said, throw him to the den of the scary beast But God saved a hero from the lion's teeth yeah. My God's the king of the giants My God's the king of the lions My God's the king of the creatures of the deep My God's the king of me When I'm lost and afraid, all alone in the dark, you're with me Oh, you're with me My God's the king of the giants My God's the king of the lions My God's the king of the creatures of the deep My God's the king of me My God's the king of the giants My God's the king of the lions My God's the king of the creatures of the deep My God's the king of me God's the king of me. So today, may God bless you. I wonder in what you've heard today as you've joined with us in our worship. I wonder how God has encouraged or maybe even challenged your heart. Let me leave you with this prayer. May God, the Holy Trinity, make us strong in faith and in love and defend us on every side and guide us in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen. So have a great day. Keep looking to Jesus, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And whatever comes your way, trust that you are now part of his kingdom, his rule, and his reign. And find your strength, your strength for today, and your hope from tomorrow, from him, King Jesus. Have a wonderful week. See you soon. For your